Greetings in the precious name of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to our 36th Demonic in Internal Medicine. It's Ryan here. Today we're discussing perineoplastic manifestations of lung cancer. And the mnemonic is NUSHM. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a quick scripture to encourage you. The book of Psalm chapter 9 verses 9 uh, says, The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. So if you are undergoing some storms in your life, I encourage you to turn to the Lord and find refuge and find solace and find peace in your heart. Quick jokes. What did one cigarette say to the other? He said, don't go ashtray. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, everyone says that smoking um, will kill you. What they don't tell you is that it also cures salmon. <laughs> Okay, guys, there's a lot of perineoplastic manifestations in lung cancer, okay? The first up, N stands for neurological. So here, it's mainly small cell lung cancer that causes this. And examples of uh, neurological manifestations includes dementia, cerebellar degeneration, optic neuritis and retinopathy, limbic encephalopathy, perineoplastic sensory uh, neuropathy associated with the infamous anti-HU antibodies, that's anti-HU antibodies, and of course, lambert eaton myasthenic syndrome. And in LEMS, which is lambert eaton myasthenic syndrome, we know that there are uh, antibodies which are produced against the presynaptic calcium channel, um, which causes a diminished uh, propagation of action potential and uh, muscle weakness. All right. And the way you differentiate this from our classic myasthenia gravis is that with myasthenia gravis, you know, the weakness... Um, exhibits fatigability, so it gets worse with repetitive muscle contraction, but with limbs, it actually gets better with repetitive muscle contraction. And of course, the other difference is that with myasthenia, the antibody is against the uh, postsynaptic acetylcholine receptor, but with limbs, the problem is antibodies against the presynaptic calcium channel. All right, talking about endocrine manifestations, mainly the naughty uh, <laughs> subtype of lung cancer responsible for this entity is small cell lung cancer because examples of manifestations is uh, the syndrome of inappropriate ADH secretion, right? SIAD, in which case clinically the patient has uvolemic hyponatremia, and we'll talk about that in our renal section. Okay, so the lung cancer produces too much of uh, ADH. Uh, another example is ectopic Cushing's as a result of uh, ACTH, adrenocorticotropic hormone, which is elaborated by the small cell cancer. And of course, hypercalcemia occurs on the basis of numerous pathophysiological mechanisms. One, the most common is the elaboration of too much PTH-related peptide, which is parathyroid hormone-related peptide, which leaches the bone and liberates calcium, number one. Number two is because of local bony osteolysis, which also liberates calcium into the bloodstream. Number three is elaboration of too much 1,25 dihydroxy Cholecalciferol, vitamin D, which occurs not only in the setting of lung cancer, but also in granulomatous conditions like sarcoid, etc. Right? Renal manifestation is very rare, and that's where we have like uh, nephrotic range proteinuria, but very rare. Skin manifestations of perineoplastic um, uh, as a perineoplastic phenomenon includes things like acanthosis, nigricans, and dermatomyositis. And we know that cancers are actually hypocoagulable, so they cause a hypocoagulable state and the predisposed to thrombosis. Right, and of course, musculoskeletal manifestations include clubbing and hypertrophic pulmonary osteoarthropathy. All right, so there you have it, guys. Perineoplastic manifestations of lung cancer. Nursham.